I like light bulbs. I really do. Don't get me wrong, other light emitting sources are cool as well, like the, the neon signs, the LED strips, and this dinosaur. They're all cool in their own special way, but light bulbs, well, those are something special. Yes, it's fascinating to me that for something as important as the invention of electric light, we managed to find a universal socket. You can buy an old light bulb and it'll, you can shove it in there. You can buy a new light bulb and it'll shove right in there whether it explodes or not well that's up to you the socket and the bulb that's all well and cool but something i've been thinking about is we don't really talk about light bulbs that much as far as public discussion on light bulbs go it seems to begin and end with its creation yeah edison did some stuff edison didn't do some stuff but i don't want to talk about that today no because to me this feels like looking at the whole car industry and just discussing the creation of the internal combustion engine with everything else written off as a footnote in public consciousness. So I'm going to talk about light bulbs. Let's begin here, the standard incandescent bulb. How does it work? For the sake of oversimplification, this thing heats up another thing that's inside of it, and then it glows. Cool. These used to be very popular during this time, but they had their own set of issues. You'll know a bulb is this bulb with this distinct look, the warm glow and hue, the soft light that cuddles you like a cat in the night. They're good in their own way. Way, but they also have quite a few problems. One concern I've always held with these are their lifespan. Generally, light bulbs are not used all day, every day. Many are just used a few hours here, a few hours there. But even with this casual usage, yearly light bulb replacements used to be expected. If you use them more, you might even have to replace them once a month. And this, I, I don't, I don't like this. I think each light bulb should be given a full life. It's hard to develop an attachment to them after just knowing them a few months. And tragically, this is partially by design. See, in the early days, of light bulbs, average life expectancy of said bulbs was increasing dramatically. For many companies producing the bulbs, this was a problem because if people don't need to replace their light bulbs, sales drop. So they got together and formulated a little plan to artificially decrease the life of light bulb by, by quite a bit, actually. And this lasted a while until they were found out and then uh, and then the light bulbs still kind of stayed shit. Yeah, like, like they didn't make better light bulbs, really. They're st they still died. Like, really fast. None of that matters, though. These things remain the choice light bulb for a century. And beyond these lifespan concerns, why not? The bulb oozes of nostalgic appeal. Ooh. Ah. And I know what some of you might be asking. Why do these bulbs look different than my bulbs. Is there a quantifiable measure of which bulb is better? Yes, <laughs> yes there is. But before we get into all that, it's important to note what light itself actually is and how you perceive it. What we recognize as light is photons moving through the electromagnetic field at wavelengths within uh, this area. There's light within smaller and larger wavelengths, but it's not visible light. You can't see it. You can't see it. Like a rat might be able to see a radio wave. I don't know. I didn't look it up. So within these wavelengths, th these are the colors. If, if the wave's this big, it's going to be that color. And objects are given their own color from light reflecting off of their surface. Some surfaces prefer to reflect more of this wavelength. In this case, it would be red. Some reflect all the wavelengths at once, making it this, this, this whitish color called white. And if it doesn't reflect that many you know, wavelengths at all, it, like barely a couple make it out, it's black. The actual color of the object is kind of the opposite of what you see in real life. Real life. Because it absorbs the rest of the light. You, you just see the reflection. This is important because an object's color isn't an inherent property, but rather one that requires a light source. A blue object will not still be blue under red light. It won't be red necessarily, it's just not reflecting blue. 
fairly unimportant and irrelevant to the nature of interior lighting if all light sources emitted the same wavelengths of visible light, but they do not. Some emit more bluer tones or redder tones, some have a smoother curve of all tones, and some only carry very specific wavelengths. This is called CRI, or Color Rendering Index. It's a value based on a scale of 100 that measures how accurately color is reproduced under a given light source. The sun, uh, that sun, it carries a perfect score, which makes sense when you consider that it's the basis of what your eyes are developed to see. A poor CRI will result in lower saturation, or odd colors. The overall appearance of these lights is generally unpleasing and not ideal in the home, since everything actually looks worse than real life. That sounds weird, but it's true. Now, just because a light looks red or blue doesn't mean it's necessarily of a lower quality or is missing the other wavelengths. This can just be derived of the coolness or warmness of the light, its color temperature. Here is a chart of color temperatures. These values are measured in Kelvin, which is weird because Kelvin is a measure of actual temperature. Why is this? Well, these would be the colors that would be emitted at these temperatures from a material that perfectly absorbs all waves of the electromagnetic spectrum. Simply put, if a very dark thing would be heated up to this temperature, it might look like this. For mass-produced interior lights, this can vary from 1500 to, say, 9500. Now, most people prefer warm lights for home use, and cooler lights can offer a more energetic tone. Of course, not all lights are as bright as other lights. The brightness is measured in, well, several ways, but the one we should focus on is lumens. This is a measurement of how much light is emitted in all directions. 800 lumens is fairly standard in the home, which isn't an essential detail to know, but a fun fact. And the energy energy required to light up a light bulb is called watts. What you want to see in a good energy efficient bulb is lower watts and higher lumens. And this will be pretty important as to define the evolution of light bulbs going forward. It also would be the one fatal flaw of incandescent bulbs. They are not efficient, and this makes sense based on the very nature of what they do to produce light. Using heat as the source for that light means most of the energy is, well, it's turned into heat and not light. This means they were fairly expensive to operate on a large scale, especially in large offices or factories, any interior place that has a lot of room. The solution to this was a new kind of bulb, one that would garner a fairly strong reaction from the general public, the fluorescent light. Yes, especially in the later half of the 20th century, these things were pretty much everywhere, everywhere that wasn't the home. They're weird, I'm not gonna lie. They function by containing a mixture of various gases and vapors that light up when an arc goes off in the little tube. The specific elements, gases, and design processes used will drastically change the light output, and this means that they can either be pretty good or disgusting. At first, they were primarily used as just industrial or commercial lighting systems. They weren't really designed for home use. They were big, expensive, but in the long run, they would save you a lot of money. A fluorescent light uses about one-fourth the the energy of traditional incandescence, and combined with the fact that they can light large areas up easily, they were the ideal for factories and office spaces. After all, saving 75% on an electric bill sounds pretty appealing, especially if it's an expensive electric bill. They could also last up to 10 times longer than traditional incandescence, so even if those initial costs were higher, it was economically sound for companies to invest in these rather than these. Problem was, though, well, the early fluorescents weren't all that great. I mean, just based on how their design was, you would see problems the moment you flip the switch. They have to warm up. The gases inside need to heat up to produce this good amount of light. And before that point, well, it's, it's kind of this weird, it's almost a light. 
This can be pretty irritating if you need light now, which wasn't too concerning for factories and, you know, offices, but in the home, it is a, it is a little weird. The arc inside also can give off a slight hum, a noise that's very noticeable if you're right next to it. Listen to that. Can you hear that? That's... That's the sound a light bulb makes. But they weren't just superficial issues like this either. Unlike incandescents, fluorescents often don't produce a smooth CRI, especially cheap or older ones. What this means is that less colors are actually being emitted, less potential for those reflections, and everything looks desaturated and weird. It also didn't help that they might strongly give off a blue or green hue so everything was desaturated and green. To add to all of it, these contained mercury. It's a substance that you, you already know, it's, it's lethal. If one of these tubes break, well, it's a lot worse than a normal light bulb breaking, and you, you gotta do a little bit more than a quick sweep up. As a vapor, breathing it in could be dangerous, and it's, it's not that fun. But yeah, these still did have the benefit of being highly energy efficient and lasting way longer than incandescent bulbs. So it makes sense that eventually they'd find their way into the home. These home use bulbs were called CFLs, and much like other fluorescents, they could range from fine to disgusting. You gotta think, the big appeal of these things was that they would save you money, but the initial purchase was still fairly expensive, at least compared to a normal bulb. This means a lot of people going out and buying CFLs would go for the cheap options. These cheap bulbs suffered all the problems of fluorescent lightings far greater than the expensive premium bulbs. Now, we often have a stigma that these are green or blue or, you know, bright white bulbs, but that's not necessarily true. You could get a cool toned or a warm toned bulb, but most factories and offices would always have that bluish hue. Now this was mostly just to encourage worker productivity under these lights, because it's hard to get tired when the lights are, are blaring in your eyes. For most, this was the first and main impression they had of these bulbs though, so they never would go out and buy them. Over time, color accuracy and some of the other issues were improved, but customers were not won over. I mean, they suffered from a number of immediate problems, and when the bulbs got older, they got worse. They would start to flicker, in a sense. You've definitely seen the fluorescent light strobe effect. This is not an exclusively fluorescent attribute, though. All lights technically flicker at like 120 times a second, but it's nearly impossible to notice unless the bulb is going bad. In an incandescent, it's not as noticeable because that thing is still hot. It's not changing brightness that much, even if power isn't always getting to it. But in a fluorescent, the arcs just keep shooting and it looks, ah, uh, geez. Now, LEDs can actually do this too, and I have a LED that is, uh, it's doing that. So, I guess that issue's back. Now, fluorescent bulbs mostly gained popularity and notoriety in the mid-2000s. See, we saw the big save the environment push going around at this time, and every major institution seemed to be pushing for the most environmentally friendly option. Now, the issue with these is, well, it was more complicated than energy efficiency. They, in themselves, contained dangerous, hazardous materials. But but regardless, they were seen as the best option, and some countries began outlawing the old incandescent bulbs, and people were worried. Nonetheless, these bulbs never actually took over. People stockpiled old bulbs in case a ban was to go into place, a somewhat futile effort since these would have such a short lifespan anyway. Many just did not try CFLs in the home, since the only fluorescent lighting they knew was from offices and grocery stores. Fluorescent didn't take off in popularity because they themselves were replaced, this time by something that was far above and beyond the old light bulbs, LEDs. LEDs are more efficient, they emit more wavelengths of color so they will look better, and they don't get too hot, they don't have mercury, they don't make that hum, and they're pretty durable. They are better than fluorescents in virtually every way, in the few areas incandescents are still superior, it's hard to pick this over this. LEDs have 
live a long, long lifespan. If you buy a high quality bulb today in 2021, it could still be running in decades with regular use. The public had a general positive reaction to all this. There wasn't a backlash because they were just better. Granted, if CFLs didn't come first and didn't leave such a bad taste in everyone's mouth, maybe LEDs wouldn't have been embraced so quickly. But then again, would anything that was that was different than an incandescent? What I consider to be the LED's greatest strength is its versatility. You already know what an LED is. You're probably watching this video with millions of them right now. Light emitting diodes. They're, they're just that. They're just diodes that emit light. This means that you aren't constrained to a single color after purchase. Yes, they can be dimmed, but they can also change color and you can connect them to your phone or your robot lady. They are light bulbs perfected. So I guess the question remains of what now? LEDs can get brighter, more efficient. There's more ways to make them more cool, but can something ever replace the LED? Yes, the lasers. Okay, so right now all this looks to be a good few years away, but eventually it seems likely that rather than diodes, we could have lasers that do everything LEDs do, but with one added benefit. Rather than emit light in all directions, what if you could change where the light goes? What if you wanted to light just a narrow area, if you could change the width of the light itself, just like you change a bulb's brightness or color today? But until that point, I think we should just appreciate the light bulbs we have. Light bulbs are nice, and they're cool, and sometimes they're too cool. But no matter what, 